Okay guys, back on the Unplugged channel, forgive the lozenge. I've got recovering from tonsillitis, it's going now, but <clears throat> not been able to swallow for the last few days. <laughs> Float, throat was really swollen up. No, it wasn't COVID. It was worse than COVID. Um, snow foam lances, the raw uncut version. I want to go through each particular lance and give you my thoughts, uh, unstructured thoughts. First up, the Blitz Detailing Snow Foam Lance, £7.99. What this lance can't really do is deliver you really nice quality foam and you can't adjust the rake, okay? It's a tiny little light plasticky product that's reasonably well made, but because of all the limitations around the quality of the foam, um, I would describe this as a good backup lance. I, I think even Blitz Detailing say that, you know, they sell other lances that are better quality, produce better foam and this is like a little like a little it is what it is basically so this is how I see it is if you've got if you're a professional detailer you've got your main lance you can't be without that and if it breaks for whatever reason you could have this tiny lance kicking around in your your kit bag and just bust that out and you still be able to foam cars and it's very very cheap that's you know 7.99 is phenomenal price isn't it really so that's what that is now this is the AliExpress one that I said I bought many years ago, or a couple of years ago, from Andy at Clean Your Ride. He was selling them for like $7.99, but I don't think he sells them anymore. Find them on AliExpress, I'll find the same one. You just look at that particular bit of the lance, look at the, the business end, and you'll find one that looks exactly the same, and it will be the same, and you can get it delivered, I believe, for eight quid. Don't quote me on that. This is for all the cynics. The cynics that think that in every video I do, there's always someone that will want the cheap option and they'll say, oh, I've got, I paid seven, eight quid for mine and it's great. Yeah, it's solid and it will last you years and you can upgrade it if you want to improve the foam quality. That's where it lets it down. The foam's a little bit lacking unless you really have a high pressure system, in which case you can produce good quality foam regardless you know, of the lance quality. If you've got a K4 or a K2 and you like thicker foam, this might not be the product for you. If you like all the little features, you know, this does topple over so the bottle's not great. But it's effectively a snow foam lance. Again, a bit like the Blitz detailing one, this could be a good backup lance. But the difference is this could also be your main lance if you're less fussy as well. So I think it has to be in second place just because of the phenomenal value overall. But it's very subjective depending on if you like quality versus all this kind of cheap Chinese stuff. So I don't really know. But I thought it was a worthy, a worthy second place. Now, my PA Lance, and this is the version that I've been using on the channel for years. I bought it from Auto Bright Direct, and they do some good deals on it where you get some Magni Foam, or Maggie Foam free, and you can get the Lance and the Maggie Foam for about 40 quid, which I think is all right. The only thing is, I wouldn't go and buy this now because I, I feel it's out of date and, P, and the PA company need to keep up with all the technology. So, you know, the, the Chinese one I've just mentioned is too similar to this, even though the quality of the Chinese one isn't quite as good, the foam isn't quite as good, but you pay quite a lot for this and the filters on it are expensive and it's all spanners and stuff like that. It's quite industrial. It doesn't have a filter in there. It's low on features and it just didn't deserve to win this test although lots of you tell me that you bought the PA Lance many years ago you're still using it makes nice foam and you haven't got a problem well that's kind of how I feel as well they're all they all all these good ones will do a job but I wouldn't go and buy this now um, so that's why that really didn't get into the top echelons now the carbon collective I mentioned in this video I think the owner of this brand has got an eye for design but throughout his whole product line. A bit like Gion, some brands just understand the importance of design and products looking really good. Now, even though this didn't win, it might be the one that I keep and use because it looked great on my shelf, a bit like those IK sprayers. I love the fact that it's painted all of those horrible looking brass fitments and they now look all blingy and it's all black and it looks mean. That's why I like this particular product. I love the flask as well. I'm, this flask does fit on the MJCC one, so I might do some modifications and play around and stuff like that. 
Um, what are the downsides of this? When I did my little shorts, so I read the comments and feedbacks. Quite a lot of people were saying that this was a cheap lance, a cheap Chinese lance that was overpriced at £45. Um, I thought it was a little bit harsh because it feels well constructed to me and it feels solid, especially at the business end. It feels nice and heavy set and just feels reasonably well engineered. And I know that the cost of developing this bottle will be, a, it will add a little bit on there from just using the standard like HDP bottles that come with them, like a hexagonal bottle with a scale on it. That's had to be specified and manufactured. So paying 45 for it, but I do agree. In essence, I suppose you could say it's getting pricey for a, a Chinese made lance, but I don't know. I, I still think the natural order of things are that a lot of people will have bought this and it will be a decent product. The foam that comes out of it is good. Yes, you get a little bit of streams within the fan. So it's not quite as good quality foam as some of the other ones, but it's okay. We have no problems with this. It's, it looks amazing. Um, but yeah, didn't quite make it onto the podium for all the reasons we've discussed. The Auto Glim and the Angel Wax products. So they're, they're obviously the same product, guys. We've covered that in the video. You know, we've got MTM and MJJC that make the lances, a couple of other companies in China that make them. Apart from that, detailing companies aren't going to be able to manufacture all of these accessories that they make. So it's no real shock, you know. Some people don't know that. That would be a big shock to some people. It's like if a detailing company sell you a polisher, they're very unlikely to be able to suddenly set up a warehouse and start manufacturing polishers and stuff like that. So I wouldn't get too caught up on that. Uh, and there's lot, lots of lances are all the same, you know, rebranded and stuff. I'm trying to pick original ones in this test, but I just had these two, so it's worth putting them in. Now, for a Chinese-made product, the quality of this is great. It feels heavy set. Again, that's nice. There's no, like, vagueness in when you twist it or anything like that. It just feels well set up and well calibrated. Um, it's got the wide neck on it and a big bottle flask that you can just tip into. And that's probably enough features for most people. Yeah, I wish I'd have put a scale on it. That would have just been the icing on the cake. You could also, some people might want a slightly wider rake on it. Um, I like the way they've cut away the edge there so that when you do get the rake wide, it doesn't hit the, um, the skirt or the shroud, if you like, and splatter. Some of them do splatter a little bit. So that's pretty cool. So that came third overall and I think it's a steady eddy and it's a good product and again when I've talked about it before now it's an established product I've not heard anyone have a complaint about it or say that it's broken or it's rubbish it, generally the feedback seems to be good and I agree it's a solid performer <coughs> excuse me the interdetailing um, fat boy lance now the first thing is, this is trying to offer you the value, isn't it? It's got all of the features, so it's the wide base, it's got a filter in it, it's got the scale, it's got the wide neck so you can pour the product in it, then it's got your standard rake adjust and mixture adjust, and all for kind of 20 quid, which is a decent price considering you're getting it from a UK business, you know, that are gonna support it. So if you have any problems as well, you haven't got to, you haven't got to wait weeks and fire off messages on Alibaba. It's, it's not worth doing if you have a problem. So good price. However, there's a fundamental flaw with this that as it's come, it's leaking. And that leak can be fixed with playing around, tinkering, spanners, stuff like that. Thread lock, it needs, it needs thread lock. But I just, I just rather I didn't have to play around with them. I've given it a good talking. I've retaped, PTFE taped it and I still can't stop it spraying out. So that's a little bit of a showstopper for me. Like Reg, it can happen on the expensive ones. Reg bought a PA Lance. Always use Reg as an example. He must just be unlucky. I said to him, I'm using a PA Lance. Yeah, they're solid. No problem. Go and buy one. He bought a PA Lance and it was leaking. And someone like Reg doesn't have a garage with thousands of spanners and tools to fix things. And he binned it and bought another one. <laughs> you know, um, so it can happen on the expensive ones as well. But the point, the reason I'm mentioning Reg Air is that lots of guys that buy these, it's a disaster if they leak to them and they're not going to sit there fettling with them to get it to work. 
So that's an important part of the test. If this hadn't have leaked, I still think the other the other cheap Chinese option at eight quid represents a lot better value, more than you know, less than half the price or whatever. So probably still go with that um, as the cheap value option. Okay. Then we come through to the MTM product, the Italian made one. Um, there's some things about this lance that I just love. I love the business end. I love this part of the lance. Just that is so well designed. And that is a piece of excellence. It really is. I love that. And lots of people will like this lance because of that reason. Just the way that the, the business end has been engineered and weighted and set up. Um, it's a game of two halves though, guys, because with that brilliance at this end, you have a complete disaster with the bottle. And the bottle is a complete disaster. Um, it's a complete disaster. Look, ow, I felt my bloody finger. It's a disaster. And it's a disaster which is not a hidden thing that could have ever got missed in any reasonable testing. It's something that is immediately obvious, um, you know, to anyone, and this product's been around for a while, and really with the level of excellence that you've got at one end, yeah, they should have sorted that out very rapidly for me, because it's, if you manufacture and build things like this, you have to take, you have to fix fundamental flaws, but why would you taper the bottom of the bottle inwards like that anyway? Why would you do that? Um, it's nice to have that grippy bit there, but that tapering, um, that should have been picked up very early on. Now, here's where it gets even worse for me, and I didn't want to dwell on this too much in the, re in the review, um, but this kind of, I thought, was bizarre. Now, as far as I understand it, MTM in Italy have a partner in America called Velocity who have the rights to sell their product in America. Now, Velocity, in my understanding, approached MTM, who make this, and said, this bottle is tipping over. We want you to redesign the bottle, and design another bottle that doesn't tip over. You know, so we can sell, you know, so we're fixing the problem. So first of all, you shouldn't have your partners telling you that. You should be driving that as a company. Um, but MTM, I think agreed to redesign a bottle that doesn't tip over and create a new version of the product, the PF22.2, um, with this new bottle. The business end is exactly the same, so it's just a design change on the bottle, as far as I understand it. Um, MTM agreed to manufacture this bottle, create an improved version of their product, but then they agreed that Velocity would have the sole rights to sell this PF22.2 version of the product, in my understanding. But that is the worst business decision any company could ever make, where you manufacture, you design, you build, you manufacture a product, and you're not allowed to sell it. You give away the rights to sell it. So MTM in Italy, who make this and make the new version, the new package, are only allowed to sell the old version to its European customers that topples over. MTM are allowed to sell to America. Uh, sorry, Velocities are allowed to sell to America. MTM Italy sell to Europe and I assume the rest of the world. Now, so that was a bad move. Why would you do that? You just, you'd say, we'll design a new version of the Lance so it doesn't tip over. And, and when they ask for exclusivity, you very politely say to your business partner, hell no, well, that would be stupid. We'll design a new version. Everyone can use it. Now what's happened is Velocities can't sell this in Europe. They can only sell it in America. But MTM Europe can't sell the new version only uh, velocity are allowed to sell it. Now someone quite cleverly has approached, in the UK has approached the American company Velocity and asked them if they can sell this in the UK, the latest version with the 
with the wide base. And um, the American company have said yes. So I don't think the American company are now allowed to sell it in the UK, but they've, they've allowed someone else to sell it. And I don't know if MTM Europe have any say in that. So MTM can't sell it in UK, the people that make it, but someone else can, which is crazy. Also, the cost of the new version with an improved bottle is 85 or 90 pounds with delivery. Um, so just to change the design of the bottle, the product cost has doubled. This bottle was not cheap to design or produce exactly the same way, so the product shouldn't double. Price shouldn't double. Now imagine the product price is doubling because it's probably got to be manufactured in Europe, exported to America, and then re-imported, I'm guessing, back to um, the UK distributor. So I'm not having a pop at the UK distributor for selling it for 85 or 90 quid because that is probably just the price that it has to sell it at to make it profitable now. That same distributor will sell you the bottle for 15 pounds to 20 pounds. And that creates a situation where if you want the best version of this product, but you're not gonna pay 90 pounds, which is ridiculous, you could buy the old version of the product, <laughs> keep the old bottle if you like, have it as a spare, you know, put your LucasAide in it or whatever. You know, don't put snow foam in it. Um, or <laughs> and you could go and buy the new bottle for 20 quid. I think it's 15 plus five pound delivery and you've got to pay 45 plus five pound delivery for this. So you'll be in for 70 quid instead. Well, if you can buy the old one, if you could buy the old one for 45 and the bottle for, so let's say 20 quid with delivery, how can the new one, the overall new product, be worth 90 quid with delivery? Um, well, it can't, can it? It can't, because you're better off buying the old bottle and then buying the new flask. So I just think, I just think the people that lose out when you make a bad business decision are your European customers. Your European distributors are not allowed to sell the latest version of the product, so they've got people asking them, and they're probably just saying, well, we're not allowed to sell it. You can't... We, the people that make it won't sell it to us. And you're, you're now in a situation where if you want the best version of this product, you have to pay double the price. Yes, if you want to buy the PF22 product. And that arrangement is unhealthy. Because what it means as well for this particular product in the UK, or the European market, is that you ha you're competing with yourself almost. You're competing with your own product. Um, but you, it also means that it's on the market at a distorted price, which doesn't reflect the market. You know, you could pay, charge an extra fiver for a different bottle design over this one. It's the same looking bottle, the same plastic, just a different design. You could increase the cost to 50 quid or 55 quid maybe. That people would still, the mass market would generally go there. But when it's 90 quid, you're only ever going to sell a tiny amount, which means your product misses the opportunity to win competitions like this. It misses the opportunity to get recommended by professional detailers up and down the country. It misses the opportunity to go viral from a product point of view. That's a real shame, because this is fundamentally a belter of a product. Now I think, I think MTM, were, they were kind enough to reply to me in some emails and explain what was going on. So forgive me if it sounds a little bit attacking, but I'm a, disappointed with the arrangement because I think they've got a fundamentally cool product and if they'd have sorted out this tipping problem which is ridiculous this product could have been up on the podium or possibly even winning because I think at £45 it's a better option potentially than, than all of these except for the MJCC which still is a phenomenal proposition at £37 with all the filters and stuff but it would have definitely got on the podium and come second in my in, in my opinion, it would have done. I like the product. So I'm disappointed that it couldn't have gone on the podium because it's got such a fundamental flaw. And that fundamental flaw has affected me all the way through since I first got this product and I did the unboxing over the last couple of months using it, tipping over constantly, put it on the shelf. It's fallen off the shelf. It smacked me on the finger when I'm doing this review. It must have fallen over in excess of 100 times. 
um, and I would modify it. I would, I would buy this flask for it, which is European made. Uh, it has two different types of plastics, has a lid, has a clear plastic section with a scale, and I think you can get this for seven quid. So the bottles shouldn't really be 20 quid, um, in my opinion, either way. So that's my feelings on the MTM. Um, I hear they've got a, a new version coming soon. Be interested to see what the new version is. I hope it's got a wide neck on it, because that's desirable, and I hope it, it has the wide flask, and I hope they do not agree to any strange distribution deals where they're not allowed to sell the best version of their product to their customers in Europe so that we can enjoy some elements of their excellent design. Um, but yeah, it's a real game of two halves that, isn't it? Business end, amazing. The bottle, terrible. Um, the overall winner. I think this was always going to win, really, even, even if that had the wide bottle base. £37. Um, so with a Chinese product, it'd be lovely if it was like £30, £29, because that's a real big chunk down, but £37 is kind of okay. Quality of this appears to be as good as it gets. I haven't drop tested these. I don't want to smash them all up. Um, but it, everything about it feels solid. And it has so many features. And just the fact that they're prepared to give you two filters. So, like, those filters can't be expensive to make. They can't. <laughs> they can't. Um, you know, paying five or six pounds for replacement filters on some of those other lances just hurts. It's like, how much? It's only a little bit of compressed wire. I know there's big difference in the quality of those filters, but that price is silly. Whereas just, I think these are the only ones that said, here, you can have two, two, two filters for free. And the filters are good quality ones as well. So you effectively get free filters. Another massive thing with this lance for me is you're never gonna have to take a spanner to it. Never gonna have to take a spanner to it. It's completely serviceable with just unscrewing things and just pulling a pin out which is what I really like because once that PA lance once you take it all to bits it was all held together with blue thread locker it's never quite the same um, taking them to bits can be a right nightmare you know you, it's just a pain I don't think you should have to in 2021 I don't think really you should be having to use like tape and thread locker to fix leaks on products and they've come along and design something where they probably feel the same. You shouldn't be playing around with spanners. Um, so I love that. I'm never gonna have to get the spanners out on this particular thing. Um, the little jangly thing inside, I actually find that quite annoying, but it would come into its own when you use the product. And when it's full up with liquid, you don't get the jangle so much, but they've done it for a, because for, they wanted a function in there where they didn't want it stalling when you're at different angles. So they're designing things in that aren't in the other other products. And I've said in the video, I love the fact there's patents on it. So overall, oh, that's the best of speed. <laughs> oh God. So overall, I just think the MJC product, as well as, and it produces the best foam, is just the worthy winner as a no nonsense, good quality lance made by a company that are not copying as far as I can tell, and, and are patenting and innovating design features, even the little rubber stoppers to seal it up so it won't drip and leak on you. Um, incredible. You could argue the axis adjust is something that MTM came, came up with, if they came up with it, I don't know. But it doesn't have any of the clicks in there. And it's not it, it's not a copy of their system. It's, it's a unique design. So... The only downside with this is the fact that you need three hands. So when you've got the product on and it's there, you want to be able to adjust the rake and the axis. The problem is when you try and adjust the rake, you end up adjusting the axis. Um, so you've almost got to like, you need a third hand or you've got to set it to how you want it and then don't touch this. Uh, and I have found in testing that you go to adjust the rake and move it and it gets a bit annoying that does that's the only thing so i hope mgm uh, mgm mjjc in their next iteration can fix that because they're like a company that i think 
will just fix problems rather than, you know, take years to fix problems. That's the one thing about the Chinese is they don't tend to, they don't tend to mess around or hang around when they see a problem, they can just fix it. Um, so yeah, that I think is definitely the worthy winner. Everyone will have an opinion on which one works for you. But I think the only contentious thing is really the quality of this. Some people will say this should have been the winner or this should have been in the podium, but I've gone through and given my reasons really, and I think overall, first, third, and second, you could have swapped those two around. But that just represents a no-nonsense, mega cheap option that's robust. Um, and I think the people that might appreciate the, the um, Angel Wax Blizzard and the Auto Glim one, because of the, those, those features with the bottle, they're perhaps the type of people that will appreciate the extra features the MJJC gives you, and they'll definitely appreciate those filters and the upgraded orifice. Um, mm. Ironically, the foam that comes out of this with the 1.25 orifice seems great so I don't even think I'd need to mess around with that but I could try putting the other orifice in it will take me two seconds just unscrew pop out whiz it whiz out the filter whiz in the new one no messing around job done so that's it for this video guys been wanting to do this one for a hell of a long time um, with snow foam lances you've got one end of the scale so it doesn't matter as long as it works it's cheap and then you'll get the other end of the scale the difference between 10 pounds and 40 or 50 pounds is nothing really so there is a whole spectrum and then most of us sit somewhere in the middle um, the longer I'm in I do all this detailing stuff I used to sit at the real cheap end and like as time goes by I'm going <laughs> I'm going towards the expensive end and like getting the kind of best stuff that's the way I sort of feel about this uh, but it it's as always with any video it's tiny little differences tiny like sometimes i don't even follow my own videos and like with the ik foamers and that and stuff i use they look good so i bought them this one might do me low like uh, if we take this off a little bit of fun take this off take this off probably have to put that hose on there so it reaches into the bottle but then this could go in here and it fits on there. Paint that black. <laughs> then you've got the elite flask, you've got the bling, and you've got the good foam and, and, the, and the easy service and all that sort of stuff. No one's gonna buy both though. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Is there any snow foam cannons you wanted to see in this video that is not there? This video, I always say this, I should have said this in the main main video. This video costs more money to produce than it makes, and I've been running this test for a few months now, using them, you've seen some of the videos. I try and, try and use them a few times as well before I even start all this formal testing, just, just so in case it reveals anything, it's always the most important thing. Um, yeah, uh, is there any that I've missed? Um, do you disagree? What's your preference on all of these sorts of products? Does it even matter? And um, other than that, take care and I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. Bye for now.